So ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce our second presenter to all of you. She is a charismatic lady. I have seen her growing very rapidly in her career. A strong-headed, a very strong-headed girl with a very strong level of persistence and consistency. Dr. Sahar Shah is a very good friend of mine and a student of Dr. Mulam Ali Buriru. Currently, she is what? Let me share the flyer. What better tell, tells us about her? So, Ms. Sahar Shah is the head of Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, Bahia University, Karachi. She is the editor, author, researcher, and lifelong learner. And that is what I can tell you. She is a lifelong learner for her. Learning never stops. So, Ms. Dr. Sahar Shah, I'm really glad to have you with us at this forum. I'm truly humbled and honored to introduce you to the audience I have here with us today. Assalamu alaikum, Hina. Thank you so very much for this brief introduction and uh, exaggerating my capabilities and my qualifications and quality. <laughs> but I'm not able to deserve that. Well, again, uh, once again, I'm here at PPDC and uh, it's always love to be here with Hina. Hina Kapil, she has been one of my very good friend, rather a best friend ever. And um, uh, otherwise, you can say the only friend she has in the world. <laughs> only friend she has in the world, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> well, um, again, after so many, after I think last year we have been there. Uh, and yeah, you, you were you were a very appreciated member of the last boot camp. Your presentation was highly liked and appreciated by the attendees. Thank you very much. Uh, you have a lovely audience all the time and it's all credit goes to you and the lovely audience that are collaborating with you whenever you ask them to come and share. Um, all right, today's uh, session is, uh, one thing I just want to say before starting this critical thinking and problem solving session is, like Dr. Ghulam Ali Burio, uh, as Hina also knows that he, he, he was uh, our teacher in Sin University and after so long time, um, probably, after 10 or 15 years, right? That uh, yeah. I, yeah, that I see him here and it was really, it was really, see, I can explain my expressions and my feelings that uh, what I, what we feel actually when we see our teachers after yeah. so long time. It was such a Must be very teacher. nostalgic for you. Exactly. And he was such a wonderful teacher and I have learned a lot and a lot from him. So there were too many teachers that, I mean, that were there in two years span, but then Dr. Ghulam Ali Burio always stands alone with lots of his unique ability of learning. Very true. I, I second you, Dr. Sahara Shah. Yes. Um, today's topic is critical thinking and problem solving. Um, in today's world, as I see in language learning or uh, as an English language teacher, there are certain words, those have become buzzwords these days and critical thinking and problem solving skills are one of those buzzwords that are there in the global arena as well as in Pakistan. But these skills are lifelong learning skills and that are not only restricted to the classroom learning or the students, these skills are related to human nature in general. And as a student, as a teacher, if we employ these skills in our classroom with the students, we learn a lot from these. These skills have become, I mean, then become the skills that can, that, I mean, that can motivate us, that can prove and that can prove those type of skills, those help us in the long process of our life at every I mean, at every step of our life, every place, wherever we are, these are such kind of skills. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that these skills are not restricted to classroom learning only. These are the very skills that every human must need. All right, let's become. Let's begin with the definition. Well, uh, Hina is really kind to me that she is playing these slides for me because I, uh, I mean, as usual, my laptop is not working well. And I have no time to get it repaired, but Hina is so kind that she is doing it for me. Out of your busy schedule, you spare time. That is something that is more than for all of us. So this is a very small gesture, Miss. No worries. Okay, so nice of you. Critical thinking has been called the art of thinking about thinking. 
often the definition is quite tricky, you know, the art of thinking about thinking. And then with the intent to improve one's thinking. Well, thinking in itself is a very extensive and very, um, you know, very rigorous process that one goes into. Now, the art of thinking about thinking, that how to think, this is what we actually mean. When we say critical thinking, it only means that how to think. And I must say that most of us do not know how to think. We think as a, as a natural phenomena as we breathe as we do many other works, as we eat, as we walk. But in essence, the art of thinking about thinking is really needed to solve our problems, to solve our day-to-day -day life, I mean, to resolve our day-to-day -day, uh, phenomena in life and whatever we need, at, I mean, whatever comes to our disposal in life and we get depressed and we get like hectic of that. We actually, at that particular moment, we actually need to know that what is the art of thinking and how to think about it. So this is what critical thinking basically is. Now to think critically is not to criticize. This is something really uh, important to understand about critical thinking because when word criticism comes to our mind, it only means, or most of the people assumes that criticism means something, very, I mean, in a very, very neg negative connotation word. However, it is not. We have been uh, like, uh, 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 we have been learning, um, or the studying literary criticism as a course in our MA English. And then I have been teaching this course for so many years to my students of BS English. And I start my course by telling them that to criticize never means to finding faults. To criticize means to think critically, to know each and every dimension of something. So critically is not to criticize in a negative manner, but rather to think deeply or to question. Critical implies evaluation of thoughts, ideas, or judgments with awareness, creativity, and refinement of these processes as needed. This is what I just said. Next. Now, what is problem solving? As our topic um, comprises of two buzzwords, problem solving and critical thinking. So first, uh, we will go into the definition of these words, then be dealing with them separately. Problem solving is a skill you can use to find solution to challenges. This is the very skill along with the leadership skills, along with the team uh, work and all that, that are usually required at every workplace for any kind of, especially, uh, I mean, for any kind of job, but especially for the jobs that are executive sort of jobs or that are jo jobs that are of ad administrative levels. It is often requires the ability to identify factors that influence problems that arise and the ability to improve and the ability to improvise effective strategies that resolve them. Please let me close the time. Sorry, uh, I didn't close the time. It often requires the ability to identify factors that influence problems that arise and the ability to improvise effective strategies that resolve them. We should have that ability to identify factors, factors that are actually responsible for arising of the problem. And then what ability we need to improvise in solving those problems. Working on your problem solving skills can improve your creative and analytical thinking. When you are working on your problem solving skills, when you are knowing that what are problem solving skills, actually you are working on your creative and creative and analytical thinking. Now these two terms, problem solving and critical thinking are interrelated, rather interdependent. One more thing that is important to note over here is that problem solving is one of the sub category, is one of the sub skill that you need when you are thinking critically. I want to ponder a few things that are not there in slides, but then I want to tell you from one of my documents that there are certain essential skills. Those are the basis of critical thinking, certain essential skills, right? Now, among those essential skills of critical thinking, one is the problem solving. Number one is communication and information skills that you need to critically think or think critically. Second is thinking and problem solving skills. The other one is interpersonal and self-directional skills. And the fourth one is collaboration skills. 
right? So among those skills, those are really essential to think critically. One is the problem solving skill. That means you cannot think critically if you do not possess the problem solving skill. But this is what actually crux of the matter is. All right, next. All right, now let's see that what is the difference between critical thinking and problem solving skills. Critical thinking is a lifelong practice you use to improve your thinking process. While problem solving is a set of techniques you specifically use to find effective solutions. This is so clear that needs uh, no much, I mean, uh, no more elaboration. Next. How to identify what who are the critical thinkers, right? So if we if you want to know that what are who are the critical thinkers, we must see that what are the characteristics of critical thinkers. Now one critical thinkers, critical thinkers actually are those. Those have some specific qualities, right? And they consider many different investigative approaches and problem solving techniques to decide. Or to choose the course of action. First of all, is that they are sensitive to their own limitations and predispositions. What does it mean? It actually means that you are supposed to be very, um, I mean, you are supposed to be very sensitive towards your own personality, towards your own traits, towards your own abilities, and then finally your limitations. Once you do not know yourself, you will not be able to solve any problem that comes to you. Because some of sometimes the problems are within you and you are considering or taking them as something external. Well, they are very internal inside you. So it is the first step to be a critical thinker to solve any problem that you must be sensitive towards your own limitations and towards your own. They double check the logic of their thinking and the workability of their solution. Next. Or some more characteristics of the critical thinkers include that they acknowledge acknowledging personal limitations, having understanding as a goal, and using evidence to make judgments, thinking before acting, and avoiding emotionalism. Yes. When you think, you must avoid your emotionalism. Importance of critical thinking. Why it is important? Now we are uh, specifying or narrowing down our. Uh, narrowing down our topic towards only classroom learning since uh, like here we are on the platform of language learning. So we are not taking it on board like um, in general. I'm specifying myself towards the classroom learning. As teachers, we teach students for jobs that don't exist yet. What does it mean? I mean, you might say that uh, whenever we enter in certain discipline, we always know that uh, what are the job, what is the job market for that particular discipline. But here it says that we teach our students for jobs that don't exist yet. It only means that see, uh, who knows? Uh, when I was a child, I never know that uh, there will be a world which will wholly or solely depends on technology and digital learning and all that that there'll be a time when I'll be able to communicate with the people with lots of audience around the world with the Zoom meeting and all. I never know. Before COVID, most of us did not know about Zoom meeting or any other social media um, tool to which we can interact to the audience at large. The, these are the job sets. These are the sets to which we were unknown when we were, when we were studying, when we were students. So it means that teaching students for jobs that don't exist yet. How can we do that? We can use those, we can teach our students for jobs that don't exist, but what we can aid to them, what we, how we can provide them help in this regard, we teach them to think critically. We do not teach them what to think, we teach them how to. So whenever a problem or solution or a situation comes to do, comes to them, which was unknown to them before. How they will tackle? They will tackle on how to think. When they start thinking and they know how to think, they, they know the art of thinking, they'll be able to deal with the problems which were unknown to them. 
students who develop critical thinking skills often practice those skills well into later life. This is what the idea is. The skills may in fact literally change their lives forever. We're not teaching about students for the short-term plan or for what that are, comes to, that are coming to them instantly. We are teaching them for the lifelong um, practices and the, for, for the lifelong phenomenon. Using these skills, see, skills are more important than qualifications. Sometimes you see that the person who is graduate and who is a, or who may be a PhD is not earning well, while the one who is just a diploma holder and have a good set of skills is earning more or much better than the one who is finally, who's finally graduated or finally, I mean, a doctorate or so. This is the importance of skills. Today is the world of learning. It is also says, I mean, this also says about this world in the very current the very current and the very contemporary world in which we are living, that people used to say that in the later life, in the future, the degrees will have no importance or have a very less importance. The survivors will have, the survivors of the future will have a set of a skill, that's it. So skills learning is one of the important factor. Please get back to the previous slide, I'm not finished yet. All right, using these skills, the students tend to expand the perspectives from which they view the world and increase their ability to navigate the important decisions in learning and life. The rise of technology has led the rise of rapid information. And please uh, switch to next slide. All right, now we are looking towards the steps of critical thinking, right? First of all, identify. We identify the problem. We identify the issue, the factor. Then we investigate about it. Identification is the first process. Once we are unable to identify that what we are looking for or what we are pursuing for, we will unable to investigate it in a proper manner. Then after investigation, we need to analyze on whatever comes to our eye, whatever comes to our observation. We need to analyze those things. And this is where, where we are actually implying our critical thinking ability in analyzing those things. See, the data is very much there. I mean, everybody knows that most of us, say, for example, I'm going to be speaking about the political issues since I'm also the student of international relations. Like, for example, most of us believe that, oh, um, I mean, majority is in, the, is in favor of Imran Khan, but how do we come to know about it? How can we analyze it? The data is there. But when we analyze, we come to know that what is the validity of the data? It is something related to research. So analyzing is basically critical thing. Then we reflect, that means we demonstrate. And then after reflection, we decide whether whatever comes to us is right or wrong. All right. Now we need to see that what are the integration methods through which we can integrate these skills into our students or in a broader perspective into the classroom learning. First of all, we need to see uh, the first method through which we can integrate problem solving skills and the methods of critical thinking or the abilities of critical thinking into our students is begin lessons with a probing question. It shouldn't be a question you can answer in yes or no. These questions should inspire discovery, learning, and problem solving, right? Probing questions, probing questions or thought provoking questions through which we can instill the process of thinking into our students. Do not ask them to say yes or no. Like in recent world, we used to comment on Facebook, comment and like, comment and like. I used to say my students, this is not the way to see things, just comment or like. You're not supposed to provide your own ideas on it. You are asked to comment on that, that's it. Who are you, you are a puppet? That all the time you are supposed to comment on something or either you like or dislike, no. There's a thought provoking question to which you go into the process of critical thinking. And you should draw the question towards the student to start the process of critical thinking. Then you should encourage creativity by not discouraging, discouraging them on certain questions or certain answers that are not up to you. Giving independence will allow students to become critical thinkers because they will have to create their own ideas. Because they will have to create their own answers with the knowledge you give them. Then use what would you do scenarios. Like again, questioning them. 
Here, the students are put into real life scenarios with problems we face every day. Their goal is to come up with the best possible solution to solve the problem. If we put ourselves into certain situations, the answers are really different, believe me. We always advise people by not considering ourselves, by not putting ourselves into that scenario. And the answers are really different. But we put, when we put ourselves into that scenario, the answer might be altogether a very different one. So it is important to be a critical thinker or to, skill or to inculcate the ability of critical thinking into your students. You must ask them that if you would be there, what you will, what you will be doing? How will, you, how will you be tackling that? The final is experiment with mock trials. Provide them some case studies, provide them some scenarios in which they are working and they'll be answering the questions and they'll be providing the solutions to those problems. Other methods may include analogies, promote interaction among the students. Next. Now, there are some set of questions that you would ask the students, as I said, that dropping a question and encouraging them to create and all that. So from uh, that, the previous slide, I can relate that there are certain questions that you might, uh, I mean, that you might ask your students uh, to encourage them for the critical thinking process. Number one is like, could you elaborate further on that point? Will you express that point in another way? Can you give me an illustration? Would you give me an example? And believe me, most of the time, the students used to express their comments and their ideas about certain aspects. And when, when I asked them that, why are you saying this? Is there any other way to say this? They keep quiet, which means that they only know to comment on that, but they do not rationalize their comment. They don't know why they have given their comment. There is no basic, there is no rationality, there is no logic behind their comment. Therefore, I don't, uh, really like this uh, pattern of Facebook or Instagram or other social plat social media platform that I don't usually use uh, for the reason that we are only asked to comment and like. We have no option to rationalize our comments, right? So these are the questions that are actually asking or that are actually stirring your mind for the reasons that why you believe so. These are the questions that are actually shaking the mind of the students from top to bottom to answer those comments, those opinions, and those judgments that why you have held that point. All right, then would you give me an example? Will you provide more details? Can you be more specific? Do we need to consider another point of view? Right, so these are, the, these are a few questions that you may ask to your students. Next, please. All right. Now, uh, there is an activity for problem solving. Uh, as we know that problem solving is basically a four-step process to, for making ethical decisions at work. First of all, we should um, define the problem. Then we should list the facts. And then devising. You know, I am actually... Um, See the screen most of the time is disturbing by these messages like someone is entering in the room and all that and i can yeah because you are the co-host so uh, i'm removing you from the co-host so that you may have no these interruptions okay check out now yes then devising two or three possible solutions and then decide on a plan of action, right? Now, this is a more of a more um, than the training it's a kind of workshop. In the, in the very next slide, I'm going to give you a few case studies, but before those case studies, you, are, uh, you have some suppositions, right? To solve these case, case studies. One of the suppositions is like, you assume yourself that you are employed by a large computer company with approximately 1,000 employees, and that the company is located in your town, right? And then you need to see those case cases studies, and then I'll provide you steps that how to uh, get into those case studies and how to solve these case studies. And um, each of you uh, must solve at least one case study so that you will 
be definitely in a practical situation and then you're able to teach your students that how a case study or a problem can be solved, right? Next. Right, these are the three case studies, right? All right, uh, case one, case two, case two. You may take any of the case study, right? But then uh, there is a process through which you uh, will be able to solve these case studies and the outline for that particular topic I'm going to tell you a few steps. You may note down these steps. Am I allowed to um, do such kind of activities you now? Yeah, sure, there's no harm. All right, thank you. Well, the uh, steps are, number one step is say, for example, case one, right? Lakisha is an administrative assistant at the human resource department. Her good friend, uh, again, her good friend, Michael is applying for a job with the company and has agreed I cannot see. I cannot see this part. Is there any issue? Can I help you? All right. Some text is actually hiding behind your uh, this short eye picture. Side icon. All right. Well, audience can read this. Her good friend Michael is applying for a job with the company and has agreed to uh, reference. Again, I cannot see. Michael asked for advice on preparing for the interview, and Leticia is. Uh, I cannot see that. I'm to see. Why is that? So I have no idea. I have shared the full screen. Okay, let's ask them. Audience, can you see the entire screen? Please write your answers in the chat room so that we may know. Yes. Let's case study too, because I can see the text of case study too, right? Emily works in. Um, Emily works in quality control department. Once a year, her supervisor gives away the company used uh, company companies used computers to the local elementary school. The company does not keep records of these computer donations. Emily really needs a computer. Her supervisor asks her to deliver twelve computers to the school. Right? This is the case. Now, what you are supposed to do to identify a problem is number one, the question that you're supposed to ask is you you can make a sheet of that and then uh, write those questions that I'm just going to tell you and then answer those questions. Finally, you'll be able to solve that problem, right? Uh, number one is identify the problem or ethical issue. If there is any ethical issue, if there is any problem, you need to sort it down. Do not you you need to identify it, right? Identify the problem or ethical issue. This is the first step that you should go into. Identify the problem or ethical issue. And then the second one is what are the facts? What are the facts? The third is what are some possible solutions? What are some possible solutions? And then what are you going to do? What are you going to do? These are the four step case study. And these are the steps that actually steer your critical thinking and that will allow you to think critically. However, while doing these kind of steps, the, the, I mean, you may also consider that how will you know that if your decision was the right one? After doing this, you may also consider that how will you know that your decision was the right one? So you may start working on that. How much time we are left with? We as still well have a good 25 minutes. 25 minutes, right. So uh, you may take 10 minutes to solve the case study and then share your answer on the chat box and then we see that how much uh, are we successful in this training. All right. I'll be Go there. ahead, audience. For, I'll be there for all the time and I'll be looking forward to have your questions or queries if you have any.
All right. Someone is asking that can I repeat that what are we supposed to do? I'm just going through it. See, read the case study. As it's a very short text that I have just posted on the slide. You may take any of the case study out of these three. And the steps that we're going to do is number one, identify the problem or ethical issue that you need to identify what is your problem basically, and or what is, is there any ethical issue or a problem? It depends upon the case study. It may be one of them. Then what are the facts? You may list down the facts that are provided in the case study. You may look into that. And then what are the some possible solutions? How can you solve that case study? There might be more than one solution. And then finally, what are you going to do? That means how are you going to approach this case study, right? We have all together 49 participants in this uh, session, right? Yes, 49 participants are there. I hope participants are not getting bored for, of this activity and they're going to like it. Otherwise, I will not repeat such kind of activities in, uh, in any session in future. See, uh, uh, this time I believe that um, telling something which is quite theoretical and most of the time these kind of content is very much uh, there on internet and various websites and everybody knows that what are problem solving is skills and what are critical thinking is skills. But then doing it practically after learning that what is it is uh, a real outcome. What do you think? Can you hear me? Yeah, this question is self is critical thinking. <laughs> so audience, I'm very sure you are on the dot. What are you doing? Three case studies are there. You need to pick up any single case and you need to think of the possible solutions to these. And then once you have thought of them, write down in the chat room straight away. And then we have doctor with us and she'll be helping us in knowing more how these solutions can be better. Okay, Lala says it doesn't work in all the classrooms. What Critical thinking. Classrooms? Critical thinking. Why? I want to ask why. How? This is what we call Socrates method. Teaching by questioning on the question. Simple. That's it. And I've already given a session of guided discovery on this particular theme. This is such mm. an extent. This is an an extension of the previous session. Okay, Miss Nana, can you please elaborate a bit further how it doesn't work? Yeah, she's writing. She's writing the answer. Miss Kavita Anil has answered, Miss Sahar, and you can go through that. Salma is saying that my voice is very slow. You know, are you also experiencing the same problem? I mean, I'm not uh, audible enough. No, you are audible to me. And uh, 
maybe she has some trouble with the internet connectivity. Mr. Amrani, your area has got internet connection problem. You know very well. That's why you are unable to hear properly. Ms. Lana has given the answer. She says the students have no idea to continue the topic because of their background knowledge. See, uh, again, this, this sisters, I said that this is just an extension of the previous topic of guided discovery and that previous uh, topic of guided discovery, we had enough of it that how to provide the background knowledge to the students, right? Say, for example, if we are going to a text, right? So we'll definitely provide some background knowledge to help them out. But then providing them full of that will not be, uh, will not work out. Why? Because they will not think of it. They will just get um, ideas from that previous knowledge. So let them think about the idea. Say, for example, uh, if there is a novel about, uh, see, A Passage of India, right, by E.M. Foster, in which he has... Uh, depicted a lot about colonialism and imperialism, but that was Foster's point of view. So ask your students who are residing in 21st century, where there is no such physical colonialism and imperialism, what their idea about colonialism is, right? You may ask this question. After reading the novel, the novel will provide as a background, as a, as a, back, as a background knowledge. What do you actually mean by background knowledge? See, when students come to you, what sort of knowledge they actually have? When a student from kindergarten, kindergarten, they don't know what is A, B, C, but you need to teach them. At this point, there is no such critical thinking process. The critical thinking process actually varies from level to level. Now, for that particular purpose, teacher is there. Teacher knows that how on what sort of level I have to use in, in my class. The level is there. See, the strategies are there, the methods are there. But it is the teacher who decides that what strategy, what method, what uh, technique is suitable for my student's level. So critical thinking is always there. And see all the schools like Beacon House, like Foundation and like City, they have very much this kind of critical thinking in their students. Their students are really critical thinkers. They tend to think about something. They do not just accept what you say. They always ask too many questions in the class. All right, Kavita, I'm just coming to you. Yes, case two, uh, she must talk to her supervisor. It, it's said by Shahzadi. And then uh, what Kavita said, let me see. Um, yes, he, say, he said that I think Emily should be, be should feel free to talk to her supervisor to come for computer. One of the answer is that this, uh, that uh, she should talk to her supervisor about the computer, but this is the answer what most of them, or most of you are giving, right? Is there any other possible solution that uh, to solve this case of study, to solve this problem? Organization must be flexible in their policies, yes. Uh, Yasmin says policy breaching. If Marvin really wants to learn about email software, he should either convince his supervisor to take the course in evening at some institute. If I was Marvin, I would let my supervisor know the importance of the skill and, the con and convince him to let me use the software in the space. This is what we are. See, Yasmin not only give yes, Yasmin not only gives the answer of the solution according to her opinion, but she also putting herself into that solution and then uh, and then answering that question. This is what we actually need from a critical thinker, right? Well, I'm enjoying the responses in the chat from Sahar. Yes, I, me too, me too. I'm saving the chat for future reference. Okay, everyone. Warm up your fingers and response as early as you can. I asked, I mean, I would ask just one question from those who uh, have solved the cases, the second case study. Is it the organization who is responsible, more responsible for such kind of thing issue? 
or the supervisor? Feel confident and talk to the supervisor. All right. But whose mistake is this? Is it uh, is it Emily or the organization or the supervisor? The organization and the supervisor are completely responsible. Yes, very much. Emily is not responsible. See, the issue is faced by Emily. However, Emily is not directly responsible for that issue. Now the solution may be that Emily should feel free to the supervisor and tell him that what is the real scenario. After which she will own, um, um, after only which she'll be able to solve the problem. Otherwise, she wouldn't be able to do that. Organization is at the fall. Yes, very much true because organization has no record of delivering those computers and now she is asked to deliver more computer towards the, to the Institute of the Elementary School and the organization has no record for that. Right. So this is the problem that has basically arise. First of all, we need to identify the problem. The, what is the problem? How did you well, let me say what, what was the problem basically? The problem was of the record. Well, see, uh, from this kind of activity, you know, you may also see that different different participants have different sort of answers. This is what critical thinking basically is, that we may have multiple possible solutions for the same problem. This is critical thinking. We critically analyze the problem, and now they have their own set of solutions. That means a problem can be solved from multiple aspects. It not only can be viewed from multiple dimensions, but it, it can also be solved by multiple options. Yeah. This is allow me to contribute that. Thing. Allow me to contribute that in case yes, if we start sure. teaching with this method in the classrooms, then it's very easy for the learners tomorrow to handle their own life problems. Because exactly. what happens in the real life, we don't take problem as a problem and we don't look at the solution. A problem strikes exactly. us and then we quickly try to react to that. And there is lack of finding out the solution time. There is lack of the response time. There is lack of the choice time. That is something that is going to be helpful in the years to come. They have been in the ability to think. This is basically the process, the motivation to think. We usually don't think about anything. We just jump on. We just try to jump onto the solution. But before, without thinking, we cannot do so. Problems are everywhere, whether we at a state level or individuals level or domestic levels or organizations level. Problems are everywhere and they will remain there for all the time. It is we who have to solve them. Now, how to do that? We just need to think critically. Like all the time, we cannot claim that Pakistan is a bad country. This is going, to, this, the corruption is there. This is there, this is there. By claiming, we cannot come up with the solution. By claiming, it needs more claiming. And ultimately, we get depressed. By solving, we can only come up with the problem. That's it. We can cater problems. We can come up with the problems. We can solve those problems only by catering them, only by thinking about them and solving them. So this is the problem solving the skills that is really need at individual level, wherever they are, not only in the classroom. And But we are talking about classroom just because the classroom is the place where we actually can create not only education, but the skills and the skills is a part of education. Education is a wholesome process. It's not only about the curriculum. It's not only about the textbooks. It about it is about the set of learning, the learning techniques. And one of the learning techniques that we can inculcate in our students is the critical thinking. To critically think about a problem and then find the solutions on their own. See, the solutions are also dependent or from or, or they also vary from individual to individual right say for example one solution might work for me but it could not uh, like it cannot work for other person because the scenario the environment the factors that are different 
so individuals not only vary or individuals not only vary in their situation in their environment in the factors in things that are available to them so depending on that we have solutions different solutions for same problem one solution can work for one individual but it may not work for the other individual there are four different solutions for the same problem because different people have different mindset what do you say i agree with you let's see what do audience say yes i'm also looking forward to them i exactly Just believe that you have reached that answer like, hmm and see i uh, this is my personal experience as a teacher uh, though i do not teach in the students uh, um, i'm an at intermediate level or at metric level i usually teach at university and i um, when i instill i mean when i prop some questions to them about certain novel i i give them certain research articles and i i have see i i cease to uh, teach them from the perspective of summary characterization and all that what i actually do after just giving a brief background about the novel and some uh, uh, surface level themes and all that i just give them few research articles on them research articles are written from the perspective of critical thinking right they have analyzed some particular dimension in their research so i give them a lot of research articles and then ask them to comment on them that whether how far the author is right in his argument well i know the article is published the argument definitely was valid but then i ask them to comment on them and they give them comment i always encourage my students to give their opinion at the end of every question what they write in, in, in exams and they give their opinion about it so then so i do not indulge themselves into the uh, in i mean into the mode in which they always say yes to the things no say no if you don't agree say no but you must have an answer for that you must have a rational and logical valid proof of that that why you say no or why you say yes saying yes or no is not enough thank you kavita such a nice comment yes aisha i agree this is what i'm also saying that every person have i mean has their own mindset if you have any questions you may ask to me the session is about to finish yes ana so far i could find only one question in the chat room and that is what is analogy and how to use them analogies are basically comparisons right when we com compare two things right so uh, yes sometimes it's really needed when we uh, provide our and i am very much into giving examples my students usually comment about uh, my teaching is that we understand your topic we understand your concept just because you give a lot of examples sometimes the examples and the analogies are provide are, are i mean are given by me i used to i mean i already explained them that these analogies or these comparisons were not directly related to the particular situation that we are dealing with but then these may give you an idea a fair idea that how to compare things and see comparison is one of the modern tool in research comparison is one of the modern tool uh, comparison comparison is one of the modern technique that is very much there in criticism say for example if you might have seen uh, those talk shows that are there on television and uh, what we, what what they what the critics usually say about certain issue that we are facing here in pakistan let's see it it also happens in america it also happens in elsewhere in the world this is what the comparison is we can only understand things by comparison comparison doesn't mean that we compare two things in providing them levels for best or worst comparison is something that we are comparing the factors to identify the problem that what's going on with that specific problem 
So analogies, providing analogies is providing them with certain comparative tools, with certain similar examples that have at, that have certain similarities, and then certain things are different. And then we ask them to compare those problems with other problems. Say, for example, if you are facing a uh, what we can say, yes, if we are comparing Pakistan and India in their different aspects, then the comparing the, the similarity that we have is that we got independence at the same time, right? But then what are the levels uh, to which we attempt, the levels that we are right now in international arena? So this is what giving analogy. You always give your examples, a lot of examples for the but see, human always understands through examples. As I say, Aristotle, uh, is one of the practical scientists, right? Uh, when Plato disregard poets and poetry and, and I mean, give, give them the order of banishment that poets should be banished from my state because they are um, they are imitating. And he says that imitative art or imitation is something bad, that we are copying something. Then Aristotle gives an example and says that imitation is the part and parcel of human nature. A child learns by imitation. I mean, a child imitates in terms of language, in terms of walk, in terms of actions, gestures, words from her mother or, pa or parents altogether. So imitation is not something bad. How can it be? It's a very part and parcel of human nature. So this is how Aristotle, by giving an example, proving himself as a practical scientist. So examples are the key factor. They are indispensable to your learning environment. I hope I have answered the question in quite in detail. I'm really sorry for that yeah. because I'm a teacher and teacher always goes in details and all that. I'm really so sorry for that. No, that's perfectly suitable to our audience as well because a question has to be answered genuinely so that it may homes in their minds. Someone asked that, uh, yeah, Patricia, that will critical thinking create ethics? Yeah, sure, why not? Why not? See, when they analyze themselves, when they feel themselves a critical thinker, they will go into the critical thinking process. They will definitely uh, identify the problems, not only in the society, but within themselves. We always blame societies, the governments, the state stakeholders for every kind of bad that they are that is happening around us. We never, we never ever criticize ourselves because we do not actually critical, critically think. So definitely when we'll um, groom our students, brought, up, brought them up into the environment of critical thinking, they will surely become ethical citizens because now they'll be knowing everything from the perspective of critical thinking and from perspective of different dimensions. The problem is never one single factor dependent. A problem, there are several factors those are actually contributing towards raising the problem. Very rightly, Sam. We have another question from Patricia, and she's asking, will critical thinking create ethical citizens? Well, I've already answered this question just now. The National Shredo says, uh, how can we construct the structure for an argument for a problem with the help of critical thinking? I actually didn't understand. Like, construct the structure, what kind of a structure are you talking about? For an argument for a problem. And the question is too vague to me. I'm sorry okay. for that. Okay, Asha Shoro, can you please further yes. explain it? Yes. Okay, then Kavita has questioned if we cannot convey our message to somebody in a proper manner, then how can we make them understand? Kavita, your question is also a little vague. Can you please clarify this a bit further? Conveying a message or not conveying a message has a lot of factors, right? What factors are you talking? What 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 are those factors that are there in your mind? It might be I mean, see, as we say that there are certain communication barriers, right? So if the communication barriers can be resolved, if I'm the general barrier, for example, listening barriers, language barrier, environmental barrier, so these can be resolved. What kind of communication you are talking about? Again, the question is not clear to me. Or if I can generally answer this question in a way that uh, apart from those communication barriers, you can just make them understand by giving a lot of examples from the real world. The exam uh, by giving a lot of examples, maybe one or more example can fit to the scenario and they'll go, they'll understand because it it most of the time it happens with me, right? That the students, some of the students understand at once. 
but some other student don't understand and they tell me that ma'am we are not getting it oh, all right i give a lot of, a more example and then after that uh, from that example other few students they got it right but then other few uh, also uh, i mean again left then i gave uh, to the i mean to their level, then i gave them the example that suits to their level this is what the responsibility of a teacher is this is the place where i and these students and the students differ right so giving them examples suits to their level giving example that basically suit to their level is the only way that you can make your students understand perfect makes sense and then miss uh, aisha show has clarified okay, her aisha says, aisha says that if we are in the middle of a discussion and we are answering an argument how can we you again see uh, if you have noticed that critical thinking is steps we have to begin with identifying your problem how have you begin the how have you begin the quiz the discussion without identifying the problem without identifying the argument this is the first step that you need to follow right if you follow it step by step you will never stuck in the middle of a discussion and critical thinking is a scientific process that leads you into the discussion and by going through step by step you will be un, you will able to answer all the arguments in a very um, what what i can say in a very disciplined organized way all right everyone i think we have nearly come to the conclusion yes yes someone asked last question i would like to answer uh, which is uh, i think related to a mother like communication it's kavita anil right i mean it should be a mother and to a child how a mother convey her message to her child in which child are opposed to her mother well if child is opposing to you you must tackle that why he is opposing or she is opposing to you you need to identify that problem and then tackle it from there right do not take this op opposition as an offensive act please do not take it like that it's a right to everyone even to your child that she or he can oppose that she or he can disagree with your point of view this agreement is not the conflict this agreement is a first step of critical thinking do not take it as an offensive act right identify that why he is disagreeing maybe you are wrong and he is right right so identify and then answer all right it's a very very good audience very engaging very interactive i just love the audience that can always arrange for the, her, her sessions i really love to attend these sessions i'm honored and um, i'm feeling really great to part, to be a part of this kind these kind of session thank you very much dr yes. sar afshan for sparing time after your very busy schedule i am really feeling it's my pride privilege to have you with me always on the board there is a little man well, she is recently this, promoted as hod really yeah she is recently promoted as hod mashallah and she couldn't spare time at all but as she committed with pppdci so she did not step back and she in one way or the other i want, managed... i want to i want to make it correct i want to make i was not committed to ppdc i was committed to hina <laughs> perfect so much i cannot deny I mean, thank I can you thank you so much never say no it's a million dollar right. statement thank, thank you very you much so much ina for giving me heart and feel really grateful to be part to my um, i'm i'm praying my thanks to all the audience that have attended this session and they were really loving and really really contributive and interactive i just love the audience as well Thank, thank you, you so very much, much. and in return we love you back thank you very much for being with us today ladies and gentlemen we are saying goodbye and thank you to dr sahar arsha but with that let me announce and clarify that tomorrow is a very special day because that's the last day of ppdci boot camp and the boot camp what is it offering tomorrow let me show you through the graph which we have already shared so tomorrow sessions are very very important we'll have our keynote speaker jani lewis with us she is from australia and she is global leader of education policy and leadership creating a flourishing culture for professional development will be her topic 
and I'll be covering up fixed versus growth mindset tomorrow. We have interchanged the timing. I'll be speaking from 12 to 1, and Jenny Lewis will be covering up uh, from 1 to 2 p.m. So, inshallah, Tala, see you tomorrow on the day of culmination of boot camp. And we have very special announcements to make today. We'll be announcing what special courses we are offering in the in the summer vacation tenure in June and July, and we'll be arranging an orientation for that matter right after this boot camp. So I would like you all to be there and I would like you to bring more people into it because the culmination day is really very fruitful. And the, the speaker, Jenny Lewis herself is a gem. She's a global leader of education policy, you can understand. And she has been working with different countries throughout the globe. So let's see you tomorrow at the same time, 12 to 2 p.m. And uh, I'm excited. The last day is definitely going to make the real difference. Meanwhile, YouTube channel link is being shared here in the group, in, in the chat room many a times. I would like PPTCI team to once again share that for your reference. In case if you want recordings and playbacks of entire boot camp, you can go through our YouTube channel, subscribe to it, and then you will be able to find out the details and, and the, the playbacks every time. Yes, Mr. Yazdan Ali has shared the YouTube link here. I would like every one of you to please click it once, subscribe to it, and find out the playback of all previous five days, and then good to go. Thank you very much. And I'm excited that I'm delivering my own talk tomorrow. Let's see how many of you join us. Thank you very much. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and help us in learning and growing and transforming our lives and the lives of those who are our students or maybe who are our teachers at our campuses because many of us are the principals and academic leaders as well. Thank you very much, everybody. Goodbye for now. <laughs>